Hello and welcome back to Tricore Gaming and today I'm going to be giving you some tips for your amenity buildings in Jurassic World Evolution 2. However, before we get started, don't forget to like the video and if you're new here, please do consider subscribing for further Jurassic World Evolution 2 content, sandbox ideas and gaming on other games from us at Tricore Gaming. Right, let's get started. One of Jurassic World 2's best new features were the amenity buildings. The much touted feature of these being able to be customised and to change the colour and to be um, modifying them for our own themes and our own styles. Now these tips that I'm going to give today are going to be aimed at those that want to think about mostly realistic parks in Sandbox and there might be some for you guys who just mess around in Sandbox. Tip number one, default theme. So my first tip is to consider what sort of primary design you want for your amenity buildings. If you want something heavy on colour, it's best to use the Jurassic World panel design, which gives you the most colour uh, on your buildings from the outside. If you want something a bit retro with a bit of an ancient style, use the Jurassic Park concrete. And if you want something a bit clean, a bit simple, but a bit bland, go with the Jurassic World concrete. Now, a control to make use of when you're building with your amenities is the set default control available on the colour selection area. This control will make sure that every amenity building you then create uses the exact same colour selections that you pick. This is a good way of speeding up your amenity designing by giving all your buildings the same colour settings from the start when you construct them. It's far easier to make changes to the design and the layouts from this state than it is to just build a brand new one and have to go through all of the part combinations and then the colour combinations as well. Tip number two, consider what parks make sense. So this one is a bit aimed at the realistic park crowd. There are many parts for your buildings that add realistic touches, but does it make sense for a toy shop to have an upstairs open air eating area? Probably no, not really. When you're planning which parts you use, think about which parts make sense. Eating and drinking lo locations might have the open air roof terraces for eating and drinking, and that may also have the downstairs table settings as well. Although something to think about with these is that the small amenity building has no obvious way for folks to get up to the roof. So if you want to go for maximum realism, use the large Jurassic World panel entrance, which does have roof doors. The other sizes of amenities all have roof access as standard, so go wild. Also, think about what sorts of downstairs decorations you go with. Sticking with the same type for particular areas and avenues help to create a theme for that area. Don't overuse the Spinosaurus skull, as cool as it is, it just looks a bit strange. Use it as a special decoration for a particular area. Tip number three, dinner with a view. If you're using the open air roof parts, consider what your guests might actually be looking at. Think about placing them beside the lagoons and the shark feeders, or perhaps nearby exhibits. Give your guests a show with their food and their drinks. This is a common thing done in lots of zoos and theme parks uh, that I've been to in Britain. And here's an example of something that I've done. These amenities face the lagoons with the hope that they spot out air breathing reptiles breaking surface. It also gives them a good view of the amphitheater. Again, this one is aimed more at those of a realistic sandbox nature. Tip number four, think about what's visible in the windows. So another unique touch can be made by deciding what your amenity actually serves. Changing what they provide alters what's visible through the windows. Again, this is definitely aimed at a more realistic crowd. Some of my favorites include the Waffle House windows, which show a nice formal restaurant inside, and the formal clothes for the gift shops, which puts cool looking gifts in the windows. Oddly enough, no formal clothing, but it's a, it's a nice backdrop. Tip number five, profit. So this tip is aimed at the folks in every game mode and those that care about your star rating. Remember that in Jurassic World Evolution 2, your star rating is solely determined by the money that you make. So a good way of getting through those challenge modes and chaos theory modes faster is to make sure your amenities are making as much money as they possibly can. Check your management screens to see if there's any gaps in your paths and plug them with more shops. Check that you've got the right internal modules and that you're all making as much profit as you can. One of the easiest ways that you can bump up your rating from that maybe four and a bit to the five stars is to just double check you're making as much profit as you can. Tip number six, lighting. Want to give your special park areas a unique touch? Think about what colour lighting you use on your amenity buildings. Lagoon areas work well with a nice blue. Perhaps think about using a nice blood red for your carnivore areas. Bright white works well as a floodlight colour and a general colour. Pause your game in the dark and check out what colours work well for your building and for your areas. Tip 7. 
space. So one of my tips for Jurassic World Evolution 1's avenues was to line up buildings that have cut out corners together to increase the amount of space that it looks like you have in the area and to make things look less cramped. In Jurassic World Evolution 2 we can obviously choose which corners get cut at ourselves. Remember, putting a path between the buildings and arrange the corner cutouts against that path looks good for spacing and also gives you a bit of room that you could put a decoration or something in as well, just for further interest. And that leads us on to my final tip, tip number eight. Don't forget additional decorations. Don't forget that we have a lot of additional decoration parts we can now use, extra tables and seating areas for eating and bars location, bar locations. We've got lots of modern art sculptures that you can dot around, planting boxes that you can use to cover up the occasional messed up bit of path, but also to add extra detail to the entrances. Use them as much or as little as you want for some extra interest in detail and to make your pla plazas and your amenity areas look as good as they can. So that's it, eight tips for your amenity buildings. I'll be doing a few of these like I did with Jurassic World Evolution 1, so keep a lookout for more tips for building your parks in Jurassic World Evolution 2. And if you like this vid, why don't you check out some of Triclaw's other videos, whether they're mine on Jurassic World 1 and Jurassic World 2, whether they're Dane's on a variety of different roguelikes such as Hollow Knight and Hades, or whether they're Vice's streams of Slime Rancher or Pokemon. For now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.